Barbarian has been flirting with IMDb's top 10 most popular movies for the last couple weeks now. I have been intrigued. I am excited. I'm a big horror movie fan. So seeing a horror movie in the top 10 on IMDb is always an exciting thing to see, especially when it's streaming and that means I get to watch it with you guys. As of today, as I'm filming this, Barbarian is currently the number one most popular movie on IMDb's most popular movies chart. All that I know about the movie is the little one sentence synopsis that it gives you, which is a woman agrees to split her Airbnb rental for a night with a mysterious male guest setting off a nightmarish twist of events. And I have an Airbnb booked coming up next year, so I thought what better time to watch an Airbnb horror movie than now. <laughs> I don't have a mysterious male guest staying with me so there's that. I shouldn't have to worry about that. I know Phil Skarsgård is in the movie. I don't know who the leading actress is though. When I first googled the movie just to see like where I could watch it because it's streaming on HBO by the way, HBO Max. When I first googled the movie to see where I could watch it, articles came up of like movie reviews and I didn't obviously read the reviews because spoilers, but I did read some of the um, review titles and one like magazine called it an instant classic, which is crazy. Like I'm scared that I saw that title because now I'm a little too excited to watch this movie. Like now I have high expectations because to call something an instant classic is like, to me, I feel like that's like one of the greatest things you can say about movies, music, anything. Instant classic. Before we get into the movie, I do want to say something to anyone who might have been following along with my House of the Dragon reactions. I am going to be making a video in the next month or so talking about season one as a whole, what we are excited for going forward, theories, comments, questions, anything. And I have a document that you can fill out below if you want to send me anything to talk about in that video or any questions you want to ask me about House of the Dragons or anything. I have the link to that um, form that you can fill out if you want me to go over what you have to say in that House of the Dragon video. So check that out if you want to. Other than that, I think I just want to watch this movie. We're starting off with a storm. Promising. Check in process scares me because I don't want to have to reach out to them and be like, hi, sorry. Go away. Oh. We don't like Marcus. Hi, you reach Bonnie Zane with greater weight property management. No way. Getting a bad review for sure. Could you just call me back on this number? Thank you. There's no key in the lockbox because someone's already inside. Perhaps the mysterious man. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Did she not know that she was going to be rooming with a man? Because that's a problem. I wouldn't stay. I'd have to go to a hotel. I'd drive back. I would not. It's Phil. Yeah. I'm running this place. I, I, I booked it on Airbnb like a month ago. I booked it on HomeAway. You're fucking gay. Oh. Wait, wait. What am I supposed to do? He was there first. I don't know. Bye. Why don't you come inside and we'll call these idiots. So he seems genuine in his confusion, but I would think, I'm assuming that he planned all this somehow. Like maybe he's even the owner of the place, but he seems a little too genuine. It's making me second guess. Here. <gasps> Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I didn't know you were back. Listen, I don't know what the protocol is for this. Me neither. I'd be out of there. Like, you got here first. Well, sorry, I guess else. I'll... Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'll figure out something else, somewhere to go. Uh, I'll let you get back to sleep. I mean, I don't know if you've got a great look at this neighborhood, but it's not... It's, I don't think you should be sitting out there by yourself this late. If, if you want to hang out in here, uh, where it's dry and there's a lock on the door, I'm totally fine with that. No. I would just drive back home. I don't care what I'm there for. I am not staying in a house with a stranger for any amount of time. <laughs> I wouldn't have gone in in the first place. You know what I just realized? What's that? There's a convention in town. What? Yeah, there's like some huge medical thing. I don't, I don't think you're going to be able to get a room tonight. How convenient. I'd probably look at his license. Just, yeah, just to make sure I know who I'm dealing with. But I didn't want to open it before um, you got out of the shower because I noticed you didn't drink your tea 
and would well I totally get that by the way he's giving me modern Norman Bates vibes like he's a little stumbly over his words overly polite kind of charming if you didn't think and know that he's gonna probably end up trying to kill us but like socially awkward at the same time I don't know I'm good <laughs> Wait, you go ahead it's a research position for a documentary filmmaker really I'm actually one of the founders of the Lion Tamers. You're kidding. So I'm here for, for a week, basically, just scouring the side of town. So either he's lying, which is very, 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 very possible, and he, like, did research on her before causing this mishap to happen. The guy who thinks and he's trying to charm her. Things See? Things and now he's trying to charm her and get her to trust him. Come. He did his wow. research. Good night, Tess. Good night, Keith. Lock that door. I imagine it's not going to make much of a difference, but... Oh god, here we go. What was that? The heck? I feel like you're not supposed to do this when people are... I'm so sorry. What, what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing? You scared the shit out of me. Did you open my door? No. Is this supernatural? Oh, I don't like how the camera just moved. Okay, we got through the first night. I don't know how many nights she's supposed to be here, but... Okay, now my theory has changed to the possibility that he doesn't realize he's killing people. Like, you know, there's two versions. That is kind of a scary looking neighborhood, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it's in uh, Brightmore. Do you know where that is? What? Yeah, I, I, I have a roommate, so it's a little complicated. <laughs> I guess. Okay, well, just be careful, okay? Is Brightmore a real place? I will. Why do I feel like a jump scare is coming? Oh, what the heck? Oh shoot. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ah. <laughs> I have nightmares about that. I have a re recurring nightmares about that. About someone chasing me and not being able to unlock the door in time to get inside. Oh god. We don't need toilet paper that bad. You don't need to go in the basement. <laughs> Yeah. What? What the heck? What do you? I don't even know what I'm looking at. What is that? Huh? Uh uh. Okay. It's either a, a torture dungeon or there's already dead bodies in there. Thank you. Thank you. She said what we were all thinking. Smart. This is a big room. What is that? Oh, that is terrifying. I didn't even think about seeing something like that. A creepy, musty, dusty room with a camera set up with a camera? That means he's about to do some twisted stuff to you if he's got a camera set up. Okay, is she gonna go to our little Airbnb bestie like, help, look what I found. Oh my god, no. You don't want his help, girl. Hey! He is the owner of this house. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm, st I'm stuck down here. The camera. And a bucket. Yeah, what's right, the bucket so for? So there's a bed 
And a what? A, a bucket and a camera? Yeah. Okay. Move! Just stop! Just, just, can you give me a moment, please? Can no. you just give me a moment? 20 seconds? No. Can, can you just wait up here? Why would you care? Like, In case I get locked inside, too? Ugh. I guess. Oh, wait. Don't tell me. <sighs> just 30 seconds. Okay, so either he's gonna go down there and he's gonna come back up and be like, there's nothing, you're crazy. Or we're gonna get to see him go down there and the and the room is not gonna exist and that's gonna confirm that there is actually supernatural stuff going on. Okay. I swear, girl, what are you doing? I feel like it's too early in the movie to get this serious. Oh God, girl. I, who get, uh, F Keith, get out. <laughs> I don't care about Keith. I would not care. I would call the police, sure. I'd leave, get in my car, make sure it's running and ready to go, revved up. See, this is my favorite game to play when I'm watching horror movies is the what would I do thing. I'm very aware that in the moment it might be different from what my logical brain away from danger is thinking. <laughs> what? Jump scare, jump scare. Uh-uh, oh no, there's more. There's another, there's a basement in the basement. Girl, you are not about to go down there. What? Keith! No. For a second, for a second, I was like, maybe Keith isn't the bad guy here. But no, this is all part of the trap that he's setting for her. Get out. Couldn't be me. Oh, Jesus. Oh my god. They can get me with so many jump scares right now. I hate... I hate when the lighting is like this, when you can't fully see everything. If this wasn't terrifying, this would be kind of cool, you know? Like, I feel like if my house had this as a child, I would play down here all the time. <gasps> what the... F oh my god. That did not look like him. Huh? This is a zombie movie now? Why? Why? Was the Keith was what's happening? What the where are we? I have so many chills. Keith was a good guy, and and what is this? The start of a new movie? What just happened? 43 minutes in, she's claimed that you were sexually aggressive during the filming of the pilot, and she no longer wants to move forward if you're involved. I'm fired. I think essentially that's that's the most likely outcome. That fucking bitch! Oh my god! What's she saying I did? Is she saying I raped her or something? Those aren't exactly hot properties. I can't fucking believe this. This is nuts. So is this the owner of the Airbnb? Or is he gonna end up in the Airbnb because he has to sell his Michigan home? And then he has nowhere else to go. I feel like if this guy's the owner of the Airbnb, he's like an idiot and has no idea what's going on in the basement. Fuck. Okay. Oh my god. Oh. She just took some convincing is all. That's okay. it. Okay, but what yeah. the fuck does that mean though? In the beginning she was like, no, oh, whatever, but like and then we started fooling around more and then she was down. Like right. fucking really down. The way that he reacted when he heard the news that got that phone call in the car, I was like, I always want to believe the victim first and then go from there. But his reaction made me think, okay, maybe there's a chance that he didn't do this. Because he seemed so, like, put off, like, what? How could you do this? What? I didn't, of course. Like, he just seemed genuinely confused and shocked. But that confusion and shock is from the fact that he doesn't understand what raping someone means. I just want to say that I'm really, really sorry if I did anything that night that might have, like, offended you or... People can have different versions of the same thing, and I'm actually not even mad at you about it. And... <laughs> Yeah, check out the basement. Hello. Okay. 
No more jump scares. I'm ready. Oh, she made it out alive. Be included in the total square footage. The oh low spaces, basements, dens, etc., do not usually count. Okay, usually. Oh, usually. It can be noted separately in the listing's total area. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> right past that room, okay. Oh, oh, he's in the room. He sees. He's not concerned. Uh, hello? Hello? What? Where? What? Where's that light coming from? Not just for the baby, but for me as well. What the fuck? This is Who's there? Oh my god, the goosebumps, full body ch Oh, she's back. She's back, okay. Oh. Oh my god. Wait, what the heck? Is that the same house? Oh, okay, we're getting the history. We're getting the history. This is like, what, the 50s, 60s? Oh, right. 80s. Diapers and baby stuff. If it needs, oh, this way. Come on, I'll take you. Okay, what? So, diapers and baby stuff. The b baby video in the basement. The girl. Is she a woman who lost her baby? Home birth. Bless your hearts. Home birth. Have good credit. Detroit's number one youth what are you doing? So you about to follow this woman? We've got some outages in the neighborhood, and I'm just checking to make sure everything's up to par. <laughs> we may not be able to get out this time next year, because, you know, neighborhood's going to hell, Frank. <laughs> Does he already have a woman in his basement as his captive? And his captive becomes the thing that's in the basement in the present day. <sighs> We're her children now? So she kills everyone that doesn't let her take care of them. How is that thing plugged in? Oh. Uh huh. Yeah, keep walking. Oh. Oh no. Go. Okay, keep. Go, go. No. Kick that thing down. Oh my god, she's escaping. Oh my god. No, 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 no. Oh. Okay, is this the guy who's like, girl, girl? Was he trying to save her before when she went into the house? That's a bad place. And she ain't even the worst thing that's in there. What? The guy from the 80s is alive too? Is that what the other guy was talking about? That the woman isn't the worst of it? <laughs> hey! Hey! Oh no, they're not gonna help oh, you, girl. Copy that. Give me ten. <laughs> Do you have any ID? No. Are you listening to what I'm saying? If you don't have keys, you don't live here. We're not going in. Oh my Just god. Bring down. There's someone trapped in there. I've had enough of you. You're lucky we don't bring you downtown to sleep this off in jail. <laughs> sleep this off? Are you Jolly. kidding me? What the heck? Gas station redhead. Oh god. Oh god, is it gonna be the room with the bed? Huh. Girl. Could not be me. I would never go back in there. Hey, I'm talking to you, you fuck! Is he... Oh my god. The tape, I'm guessing, was him raping the women in that bed? Okay, she just went back in to get her keys. Oh, what? No, 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 wait! wait. Oh. 
she dead? Thank God. What if she was one of his victims, though? Hello? Did he just kill her? Oh my God. Okay. Okay. I'm so sorry. She's not there. What? Oh my God. Oh my God. She's gone. She's been living there some 40 years now. She was born there. He used to bring women down there. And then he started making babies with them. And babies with the babies. And you make a copy of a copy of a copy. And you end up with something like that. Shit. I've been living in this place more than 15 years. And she ain't never came in this motherfucker. Oh my god. <sighs> You're gone! Oh my god. They're dead. Hey! <gasps> Oh my god, are you okay? I'm so sorry. I had no choice, you know? Thanks. She was gonna kill us both, and I had like, no time to think. Kill him. I feel kind of bad. Like, she's genuinely just trying to take care of you. was that what was that goosebumps everywhere here are my initial thoughts um, there's a lot of irony in the way that the only person who ended up wanting to really help Tess was the woman I need more backstory on what that woman went through is the old man from the 80s. He created this underground bunker and he has all these VHS tapes and he brings women back and rapes them. He was having babies with them and she is one of those babies. All she wanted to do was take care of these people that she would trap. Um, it's interesting how Tess wasn't getting help from the police and she didn't get help from AJ. He literally threw her off the water tower to try to save himself and attempted murder. He knew, I think he assumed that she would die from that. The woman killed him because he tried to kill Tess. Oh my gosh, it's actually painful trying to listen to myself, my baffled self, talk about this movie right now, r immediately after watching it. Now, I am talking to you in the future, obviously, and I am talking to you after watching the film a second time and talking to multiple people about this movie and telling them about it and talking it through, and okay. I do think that part of the reason why the woman killed AJ specifically so, so violently, yes, they're all violent deaths, but I feel like there was some revenge and anger in the way that she killed AJ because AJ hurt Tess. I definitely feel that. But then I was wondering, why did she randomly kill Keith? Like, Keith didn't do anything wrong. Keith maybe resisted trying to be taken care of her. And I thought, okay, is she just killing everyone who is not allowing her to take care of them and be like her their mother? And I was like, okay, well, Keith barely had any time to like comprehend. He was like, it sounded like Keith was attacked right away, you know? And then that homeless man, Andre, also got attacked right away and killed right away by her. So I was like, what? why are all these men being killed? And then I was like, that's it. It's because they're men. And at one point in the movie, she was afraid to go near the old man, her great grandpa, grandpa, dad, all of the above. That old man, she was scared to go near his bedroom. And I feel like she has genuine like fear and trauma from him. And so I was like, okay, is she just afraid of men and she wants to kill all men and then try to take care of women? And then it went even deeper than that and me and my sister were talking about it and I was like I wonder if she has any siblings and if she had any brothers and then I was like of course she didn't have brothers because the old man who is raping all of these women probably would only want to keep the 
girls alive when they were born so that they could grow up and he could, you know, assault them as well and have more babies with them. So he had no use of the boy babies. And so he probably had them killed. And this woman probably grew up seeing, okay, the boys die and we take care of the girls. I feel like that's the environment that she was grown up in. I don't, I have so many thoughts about this movie and I'm so sorry that they're so jumbled and half there in what you're about to continue watching in my afterthoughts because it was like it's a lot to process at once and I was just in a jumbled mess. I would say the other major thing that stood out to me in this was honestly the like the rape accusation on theme underneath it all. I feel like maybe a lot of the time there's guys who like they know what they did but they're just like oh I, I I didn't it was just this it was just that like I it wasn't that you know what I mean but they know like deep down what they did and maybe that was the case with this guy or maybe also the fact that rape has multiple different definitions to different people is not okay if a woman I don't even need to get into it but I thought that they brought that to light in this movie in a really creative way it really tied in well with the rest of the movie it didn't just feel like a random shout out to try to bring awareness to something i thought it was really interesting how he was talking himself into in the beginning especially with his friend in the bar how he was explaining like oh no she is she i'm just a real persistent guy trust me she didn't want it at first but then she really wanted it and you know he's just like justifying what he did and it sounds so ridiculous but then when he sees this man, this old man of a monster of a man in the basements of the basements of the house, and he sees those VHS tapes of what I assume are him raping all of these women. When he sees it like that, he looks at the guy and he's like, you're a monster. What the heck is wrong with you, right? Which is also so ironic because you did the same thing. Maybe you didn't do it. You weren't a man protruding from the bushes, snatching a stranger and taking her against her will as she's screaming and crying, you know, but rape doesn't always have to be that. I, yeah, I wish we would have gotten a little bit more about how the man went from what we saw in the 80s. Clearly he had a woman in his basement back then and he was about to go and snatch the woman, you know, when he went to her house posing as like a water guy and opened her window. That's telling us that later that night he's going to go and snatch her up and bring her back. And so we know in the 80s he was going through those motions of um, kidnapping women and raping them in his basement and probably keeping them there and maybe probably killing them and etc cetera, etc cetera. but i do wish we would have gotten more backstory on the creature the woman who was down there and how she came and came to be and how she grew up to become that like that is that is a prequel i would love to see because oh my god like i cannot imagine i thought that this movie was perfect in its suspense and perfect in its twists and perfect in its comedic timing. It wasn't too much or too little and it was like little doses along the way that I liked. It was split, pretty much split into three different acts. The first act being the Airbnb um, classic setup for a horror movie where you're expecting Keith to be the bad guy. That's what I was expecting. I feel bad for Keith because he was kind of weird. He was kind of eccentric and I was kind of, you know, I'm watching a horror movie and I'm like, okay, this is clearly setting up for him to be the bad guy. And I love that they just killed him off and he was like a, a good guy the whole time. I love that they did that. I think that's so cool. It reminds me of, it, it gives me the same sort of feeling when it comes to how people talk about the opening scene of Scream and how nobody expected Drew Barrymore to die because she's Drew Barrymore. Um, but that opening scene was maybe 10 minutes long. This was the first 45 minutes of the movie tricking me into thinking that T Keith is the antagonist. And when Keith died, was killed, I don't think I have been that shocked ever. Uh, I've been pretty shocked watching movies before, but that is up there for like plot twist. I'm taken aback shocked moments when it comes to movies. That was crazy. So then that was the first act and it felt very much like um, classic horror movie setup in that first 45 minutes. And then it, you know, twists and turns a 180 and then it goes on to the rest of the movie and then that that middle part the next 20 25 minutes or so are us meeting aj and being like who the heck is aj what the, we're in hollywood what's going on after we get introduced to aj and aj gets trapped down there is meeting the old man in the 80s and getting a little bit of history of the house a little 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 bit of history of the house and i thought it was really interesting how they cut up the film into those acts and I think they all worked really well together. It was 
it was so good. It was um, set up to the point where when a new scene or a new time or a new character, when a new something was introduced at a turning point in the movie, each time something new was introduced, I was, I was put off, not in a bad way, but I was like, whoa, 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 what's going on? And I was just the right amount of confused where it wasn't unenjoyable confusion. It was it was exciting confusion. Like, what? What's going to happen now? What's happening next? So the structure of this movie was really unique and really cool. I really liked that. Oh, I wanted to look up if Brightmore is a real place. It probably isn't, right? It's going to be crazy if it is. Let me look that up real quick. It's real. I wonder if... That makes me think, like, I wonder if someone involved in making this movie, if they're from Detroit or from Brightmore, because that's that's doing Brightmore dirty. <laughs> Ooh. An article comes up, why Collider.com, why Barbarians Brightmore is the perfect symbol for Detroit's housing crisis. Wow, so this is like a real neighborhood that's going through some stuff right now. Oh man. I'm reading this, I'm like full on reading this article now. It says, in the late 2000s, the global recession dismantled the consumer economy, dramatically affecting the number of people who bought cars. The recession, combined with poor city planning, landlord scams, and an overtaxation scandal, helped create the communities represented in Barbarian. Wow. Okay, I'm going to link this article that I found in the bio if you want to take a read for it, because I find this kind of stuff really interesting. So if you do too, uh, if you want to become more educated on Brightmore, go for it in the description. I thought it was also very funny, in a not funny way, how... Um, obsessed AJ was and being able to add square footage to the home through the basement that he found like that's what you're thinking about right now I thought this was going to be the story about never allowing yourself to get into a double booking Airbnb situation as I said I have an Airbnb situation coming up um next year and I was gonna be like I thought that at the end of this movie, my conversation would be about how if I show up and there's a double booking with my Airbnb, I'll make sure not to stay there because the person's probably a serial killer, but that's not at all what I should be worried about in that case. I guess I should be worried about uh, underground rapists, so yeah. Give me all of your theories, comments, questions, concerns about this movie. My mind is blown. I'm going to make my sister watch this. Sometimes I watch a movie and the first thing I think when it finishes is I'm making my sister watch this movie. So she's got a fun time coming ahead. Yeah, this was, I, I understand why this is number one. This is so different from any horror movie I've ever seen before. It was captivating. It was original. It had a lot of really cool social uh, commentary woven throughout, but not in an in-your-face type of way. Um, and not the type of social commentary that I really see very often. It was, to it was, it was, it was cool. It was cool. And specifically, I want to ask you guys what you think about Frank, the old man, killing himself. Why do you think he decided to do that in that moment? Let me know. I'm very curious about that. All right, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time.